Brilliant. Okay, let's get started then. Standing up, feet at hip distance. Good job. Setting ourselves up, shoulders back and down, neck lengthened. Now we're going to step touch to get us started. So we're going to step touch the side and click with the fingers, step touch the other side, click. A little bit of fun as we get ourselves warmed up, getting the groove for this evening and going a little bit faster each time just to get the blood flowing. Good job. Then we're slowing it down. We're coming towards hip distance stance with the feet. So slowing it down and now focusing on the feet. So feet at hip distance, spread nice and wide, knees soft and then lengthening through the body, shoulders back and down, neck lengthen. And always remember extending right through the very top of the head there to lengthen, to finish up right at the top. Well done. From here, we're going to start with the pelvic tilt. So one hand on the tummy, one hand on the lower back, shoulders nice and relaxed. Let's tuck that tailbone under and then peel it back and away. And again, tucking it under as far as it will go and back. So gently rocking backwards and forwards. Imagine that the pelvis is a bowl of water, tucking the tailbone under, the water pours through the back and back the other way and the water pours from the front. Well done. Trying to keep the upper body nice and still and the legs nice and still, just a flex between. This is going to free and open up the lower back joins and through those hip flexes. Now we're going to find neutral. We're going to slow it down. We're going to finish with that tailbone heading straight down and the top of the hips horizontal and hold it there. Well done. Now we're going to switch on those abdominals. Draw that belly button in towards that spine. Take that lovely wide belt. Pull it all the way to notch number 10. So squeeze and hold really nicely, drawing right the way into the center, across the body, into the middle and hold. Don't forget to breathe and release and relax and be very grateful. We haven't got to do that all class. Halfway now, notch number five, squeeze and hold. And relax and release, well done. And finally, notch number three, a gentle squeeze and hold there to switch on those internal core supporting muscles. Let's have the pelvic floor as well. Squeeze, lift and engage the pelvic floor, bringing it all the way up to level 10 to start with. Hold it there and then relax and release. And halfway now this time up to level five, squeeze and hold and relax and release. And finally level three, just a gentle squeeze and hold of that pelvic floor to support well done, good job. From here, we're gonna take our breathing under control. We're gonna take our time to take lovely deep breaths and really stretch out those lungs, get them working to full capacity. As we take a deep breath in, we're gonna circle the arms up. And as we exhale, we're gonna release and bring them down. And again, inhale to come up, exhale slowly try and finish that breath completely before we go again inhale and exhale one more here inhale and exhale this time we're going into a side bend this time we're sweeping up and over to one side with one of the arms up and over hold for a moment and then releasing back to center, softening the knees, switching the hands to the other side, up and over into that side bend. And release, back to that first side, up and over, let the head come gently with you. And release, get that lovely C curve in the spine, last one over here. And release, softening the knees, gently bringing the hands up to the shoulders with the next motion. Elbows going out to the side, we're going to start to circle. Nice and small, nice and slow to start with. Taking our time to grow those circles a little bit each time. Good job. Taking our time, because often we have a lot of stress and tension held between the shoulders and in the lower neck. So we want to take our time to release and move any tension away nice and gently. 
get that movement and freedom back in and hold it there. Now we're going back the other way. Again, starting small. Try and make sure both of the arms are working equally together and you haven't got one leading before the other. Circling a little bit bigger each time now. Good job, last one here and hold and relax, well done. From here, we're gonna take the palms, we're gonna push them forward to the screen for me. Push imaginary wall. So we're extending through the arms and holding them there. Good job. Keep the neck and shoulders relaxed as we extend them out to the side. Good job, pushing away to the side, holding them there. Good job, just getting the blood flowing through the arms. Now we're gonna take one hand down and keep the other one facing up. And we're gonna turn the head to face the hand that is upward. So we're looking at the back of the hand. Then we're gonna switch hands and we're gonna look in the opposite direction. And again, back to the other side. Gently waking up the neck at the same time. And again. And then both hands up, well done. And now we're gonna release using our breaths again. So exhale to come down, inhale to come up. Exhale, inhale. And this time exhale and relax here. Well done, just shake that out. We're coming down to warm the legs up now. Just move it down as we move into warming up the legs. So from here, we're gonna move into a step touch forward, toe touches forward. And we're gonna use that little finger click as we did before. So as we step forward, we're gonna click the fingers, step back, soften the knees back to hip distance, toe touch forward, click, soften, click, soften. Good job, softening the knees. Gently transferring the weight side to side as we touch that toe just in front. Get the joints working, feel those ankles warming up, knees, hips, good job. Well done. One more here and relax. Okay, now we're gonna get those leg muscles warmed up some more. We're gonna take the foot out to the side. We're gonna lunge to the side. We're gonna push this knee forward. We're gonna leave the supporting knee there, leg there, and we're stretching away from it to stretch through that inner thigh. We're keeping the upper body nice and tall. We're bending through this front leg forward to increase that stretch. Then we're coming back to hip distance, knee soft, stepping out to the other side, knee coming forward. Keeping those hips back and upright, drawing through to try and increase that stretch. Good job. And back to center and soften, well done. From here, we're moving into our balance. So we're keeping our feet at hip distance. We're engaging the core, really important here. As we exhale, taking the hands out to the side, transfer the weight to one foot and bring the foot away. Just balance, just with the toe touching and then when you're ready, drawing that foot up and away. Drawing up to right angles if you can. Now, if balancing isn't your friend, obviously you can lean on the radiator, the sofa, anything nearby, or you can keep the toe nice and small and just a little lift and then reset and come again as you build that confidence with that balance. Good job. Good job. Well done. And replace it, soften the knee, coming away from the other side. So keeping the weight nice and central over the supporting leg, as we bring the other leg away. I'm just gonna change sides for the view. Good job. So there's always a little bend in the supporting knee. That's gonna help us out, that core engagement. Looking at something in the mid distance that isn't moving, that's always a good one. And just relaxing, transferring that weight through the supporting foot and release, well done. This time we're coming out to the side, and this time we've got to watch. The temptation is to transfer the weight across and to move the upper body across. We really want the weight to go central here. So we want to keep the body, upper body nice and tall. So supporting knee is ready, leg is ready, knee is softened. Foot goes out to the side, hands out to help us. When we're ready, pushing through that supporting leg and then lifting away. So this leg is coming out and held and the upper body 
is nice and straight directly above the supporting leg, not leaning out to the side. Hold it there if you can and release, coming back to hip distance, ready to go on the other side. So touch the toe out, soften the knee, then push through that supporting knee to bring it up into the hold and the balanced position. Well done, hold it here. Good job, well done. And release and soften the knees, well done. From here, we're going into a squat. And we're doing a developing squat to come down onto the floor. There's less focus with this squat about keeping the knees behind the toes because we're going to be using the hands as we come down. So it's okay for the knees to come over the toes this time. So breath in, engage. As we exhale, we bring it down into a small squat to start with, just get the body ready. Engage, drawing up, standing up nice and tall. And again, this time we're reaching down a little bit closer towards the floor. Breath in, engage, drawing in, standing up nice and tall. And the last time we're coming down to the floor and hold it there, good job. Any trouble with knees, if you need to bring them round, then you can in one step at a time. Gently coming round onto all fours, well done. So all fours with some room in front of us, okay? Because we're gonna move from our cat into our press up. So we want a little bit of room in front of us. But focusing to start with on the setup for our nice box position. So wrists directly underneath shoulders, knees directly underneath the hips, feet relaxed. Shoulders level and stable, hips level and stable. Nice flat back held there, controlled by that core engagement, that gentle draw in of the tummy engagement of the pelvic floor. That's gonna keep that torso solid and nice and flat back while we work into our press ups in a moment. We're gonna start with a little cat stretch, breath in, engage, head lower, spine arches up towards the ceiling, pushes up and away, push, push, push. And then drawing back down, relaxing the shoulders, coming back to flat back that. Don't let the back sag here. Keep it supported, keep it in flat back. And again, one more cat, breath in, engage, head lower, spine arches up and away. Breath in, exhale, coming back to neutral and relaxing into that lovely box position. So from here, we're gonna go into our push-ups. Your level one push-up is staying in this position. Elbows coming out to the side, back staying nice and flat and supported by the core. The head comes with you, don't let it lead or leave it behind. When you're ready, breath in, exhale, gently control, coming back to square, that's your level one. Your level two is bringing the hands, a hand's length forward. And before we move from here, we have to bring the shoulders over the wrists again. So we bring forward those hips. Breath in, engage, elbows out to the side again, keeping the back nice and flat, lower just as far as you want to, that you are comfortable, that you can come down and back up again. And one other option that you can play with is a different move, which is the elbows coming back down towards the toes, working a slightly different group of muscles of the arm. So you've got a few options to play with there as we work through those push-ups. One more here. Good job, and release back into child's pose. So the feet come together, the knees go as wide as they can, and then we fold down and forward and relax. Now, in this child's pose position, we're gonna move into the child pose twist, which means gently drawing the elbows a little bit closer to the legs with a bend in the elbows. And we're gonna start with the elbow bent. We're gonna push through the supporting hand as we take a breath in, engage, and we lift the other hand. As we do, the elbow stays bent and we peek underneath, lifting and turning the head at the same time. 
Breath in, exhale, and slowly relaxing down to that start position. Same again to the other side. Breath in, engage, exhale, lifting the head, twisting to look underneath the arm as it's lifted away. Breath in, exhale, coming back down. One more of those on each side. Breath in, exhale, twist. Good job. Inhale, exhale, back to the mat. Last one here. Breath in, exhale to twist and lift. and return and relax there. Now, this time we're going to extend and reach one hand forward. We're going to look at the fingertips with the eyes and we're going to follow those fingertips as they come up and sweep up above the shoulder, hold it there. Breath in, exhale, reach forward as you go. How far can you get those fingertips up the mat before you return them back to that right angles? Other side, breath in, exhale, stretch, reach first. How far can you get up the mat before you stretch and reach up above you? How tall can you reach up to the ceiling? Then drawing back down, nice and controlled, reaching forward before coming back in. One more on each side and then we're done here. Breath in, exhale, reach those fingers, stretching up nice and slowly. And returning, nice and controlled, back in. Last one, stretch, reach, feel the work, feel that motion and flexibility coming through the shoulders, through the spine, breath in, exhale as we reach forward, return back and relax there. Good job, we're gonna relax out as we come down onto our tummies. And we're gonna make a little pillow with our hands and relax our head there. Good job. Make sure the legs are relaxed so they're at hip distance and then the heels are gently relaxing out, the toes are turning in a little way. Good job. Gently turn the head to face the other side to release the neck. Then bring the forehead back to center on that little pillow of hands that you've got going on there. We're gonna move straight into our one leg kick. So we're gonna move now from the flexibility and mobility, and we're gonna move into increasing the strength, particularly in the lower back, nice one here, and working out the legs at the same time. So the legs are going nice and long at hip distance. We're going to take a breath in, engage, drawing up that belly button away from the mat to support. And as we exhale, we're going to bring one foot up towards the bottom. As it comes up to the bottom, we're going to point the toe. Then we're going to flex the toe. Then we're going to point the toe. Then we're going to slowly lower it down, really nice and controlled, nice and straight from the hip. Same on the other side. Breath in, engage, draw that tummy up and then point, flex. Point and control that lower. Good job. And again, other side coming up. Point, flex, point, control. Nice and straight. Other side, breath in, engage, up. And lower, good job. There's our setup done, ready. Our legs are gonna know what they need to do. Now we're going to bring our elbows underneath our shoulders as we bring the head and chest up off of the mat. Okay. From here, I want you to tilt the hips to bring them up off of the mat. So breath in, engage, tilt the hips so they're lifted. The pubic bone is still pointing down towards the mat so the spine is in a nice straight line. Neck is lengthened. Eyes are looking just forward of the fingertips. They're in a nice straight line and hold. Now it might be just that hip lift is enough workout for you. If not, let's add those legs. Breath in, engage, draw that foot up, point, flex, point and lower while keeping those hips raised and level. Same on the other side, drawing up, point, flex, point, slowly lower, keeping the hips up. Don't let them lower with the leg, that's the temptation. 
Other side, breath in, engage, gently pulse. Heel, toe, and lower. Try and relax through the neck and shoulders. I know it's not always that easy. Point, flex, point, and lower. One more on each side if you can. Flex, point, and lower. Good job. Last one here. Point, flex, point, and lower. Nice and slow, nice and controlled. And relax out of it and release there just for a moment. Turn the head to one side, relax the feet out. Good job. Gently turn the head to the other side for a moment. Now we're gonna use all that warmth that we built up, all that muscle warmth and everything is ready to go now. We're gonna use that in our leg pull prone as we move straight into it. So from here, we've got the elbows directly underneath the shoulders again. Forearms nice and long, thumbs pointing up, little fingers on the mat, palms facing each other. From here, make sure that the toes are on the mat if you want to lift into the level two position. From here, breath in, engage. Lifting from the waistband of your leggings. So don't lead with the bottom first, otherwise it will end up going up too high too soon. Now this is a nice flat back position. So we're extending to help us hold it here. We're gonna reach with the very crown of the head forward and we're gonna push and extend with the hips out to the wall behind us. And we're gonna hold it here. Breathing nice and deeply to support and help. Now, if you're quite new to this and you need to, you can bring the hips down, you can reset, you can come again, okay? And then you build up the length that you can hold it. If you've stayed in hold, bring it down now nice and slowly and relax just for a moment. Don't come out of position though, because we are going to go again. This time, if you want to, breath in, engage, lift up those hips, extend. If you want to, tuck those toes under and extend and lengthen, pushing those heels away to move into the full leg pull prone length. Well done. Back nice and flat, shoulders, neck relaxed. Everything supported using that core strength. Breathe. And release, bring those knees down, release the toes and relax down and release here, well done. You've got the room, move into a full body stretch, nice and long, breath in, stretch, exhale, relax out of it, bring the hands down and move into a relax, well done. Good job. So that leg pull prone, superb exercise for toning right the way up through the body, strengthening right the way from that core, through the legs, through the upper body. Really good one, but obviously you can feel the effort there. Well done, just build it up in your own time. When you're ready, coming onto your side and we're gonna move into our side hip lift. So for this one, we're gonna make sure that the elbows are directly underneath the shoulder here. We've got the knees bent, which means that the feet are in a nice straight line with the back, if I draw a line down from my spine, they're gonna to touch my feet, then my knees are bent forward. I'm gonna make sure my hips are stacked, one on top of the other, my knees are stacked, my feet are stacked. I'm gonna lift that waist up. At the moment, my spine is very curved down to the mat. I'm gonna use the oblique muscles on the side to hold it in a nice straight line. I'm gonna bring the hand up to the head if you want to, just to extend that and help you hold that positioning. If you find the hand up is too much, pop it down and just use the fingertips, but try not to fold forward through the exercise. So keep that frame open, that picture frame from shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip. It's nice and solid, don't let it fold. And here we go. We're gonna extend that top leg, okay? We're starting with the hip on the mat, but the waist lifted and engaged. Breath in, engage, and bring that leg up to hip height as we extend the hand just gently above the head. 
And then as we lower the leg, the head comes back, hand comes back to the head. It just hovers above the other foot before we go again. It's not a very big movement of the leg and lower. So they don't touch, hopefully. We can keep that leg working free. Obviously, if you do need to lower any time, then you can do. Let's keep going with that lift and lower. Might be feeling this one if you spent the weekend gardening. Good job. Or standing on your feet and lower. Okay, this time we're gonna lift the hips if you want to. So we're gonna lift that hip up off of the mat. Keep that line nice and straight. Shoulders back and again, lengthen and lower. If it's too much, just keep the hip down. And again, if you want to, fingertips just on the mat there if you want to just work the leg. Let's lift and hold this time. You can leave the hand on the head during the hold if you want to for five, four, three, two, one. Well done. Relax the leg down, bring the hips down, curl up. Now in our curl up, I want you to get into position because we're going to curl up, but we're not going to relax entirely out of it yet. So we're going to move into our clam. So from here, the feet are still in a straight line with the spine, the knees are bent forward. From here, make sure the upper body is relaxed. So the head is in a nice straight line. You can either make a little pillow with the hand here to move and have this top hand down, or you can have your head lifted. I'm going to keep mine up just so you can hear me clearly. So the clam, we're working through this hip flexor here. So the hip is our anchor point. Don't let the hip roll and open to help you out here. Keep it stacked. I want you to place an imaginary ball between the knees. Breath in, engage, drawing that knee up, 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 up first with that piece of string pulling from the top of the knee. Hold it there, pushing against that hip. Then when we're ready, breath in, engage, and then imagine that ball between the knees as we squeeze to close. Try not to finish completely. Try and hover just above the other knee before we come again. So try and keep the movement going here. And again, engage and squeeze and open. And lower. And lift. Good job, squeeze and lift. And last one here, squeeze and relax. And this time you really are allowed to relax. The knees come up, the upper body comes down, relax into a nice little ball and release all that great work. Well done, good job. Well done. From here, we're going to come on to our back when you're ready. Now we're going to combine some flexibility work with some strengthening work as we work on lifting the upper body in a curl up and combining it eventually with the leg lifts as well when we're ready to do so. OK, so shoulder blades are relaxed underneath us. We're going to work in neutral spine. So gently tilt the pelvis backwards and forwards until you find neutral. So that's halfway between flat on the mat and fully arched. Gently find that halfway place and draw the belly button into the spine to hold that neutral spine in place. Good job. So we've got a couple of options as we're working on the curl up. If we're really just starting to train the neck and shoulders to lift, then place one hand underneath the back of the head. The thumb is placed at the joint between the bottom of the skull and the neck, and then the other hand is placed on top. Relax the shoulders. Make sure you're still in neutral spine. As you bring the hands up here, often the lower back likes to arch out of neutral. You need to draw that tummy in to keep it there. Now, these hands are allowed to come and play, but they're not taking over. They're just coming for the ride. What I want you to do is imagine that there's a rope attached to your sternum here in the middle of the chest. 
I want you to take a breath in, engage. As you exhale, you're gonna pull on that rope as you gently curl up. Remember, curl, curl the chin in, curl the rib cage as you come round. Don't pull with those arms and elbows. Look through the knees, breath in here. Exhale, extend and lengthen the neck as you gently bring the head back down to the mat. Okay, that lengthening is really important. That's really gonna help to reduce the cramping through the neck that we sometimes experience here. And again, breath in, engage, thinking about curling, 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 looking through the knees, breath in. Exhale slowly, controlled, all the way back down. Now that's your level one with the arms behind the head. Your level two takes the arms down to the side. So when you're ready, breath in, engage, curling up, curling up. Again, those arms aren't pulling you. They're gently coming up. There's a little bend in the elbow, so I know that they're not doing the work. Breath in here. Exhale and gently lower, nice and slowly, nice and controlled back down. Same again, breath in, engage. Whichever level you're working at, just relax into it. Curl, breath in and relax, keeping those core muscles engaged until the head is all the way down. Now we're gonna add a single leg lift into it if you want to, if you're in a position to do so, okay? So if you are, one leg up to right angle. Shin is parallel, knee is directly above the hip. The other supporting leg is nice and square with the hip and nice and solid to hold it there. So this time what we've got to do is make sure we don't end up with a little twist in the hip because we've got just the one leg raised. So your job is to keep the hips level and stable and draw the body up evenly back to the center in the same way as we did before. So from here, breath in, engage, tummy drawn in, exhale, chin towards chest, shoulders relaxed and round, lift and hold, breath in, exhale, relaxing down, but you don't release those tummy muscles until you are all the way back down. And again, breath in, engage, curl up and hold. And curling down, controlling it all the way. Let's switch feet. So bring one down, bring the other leg up. Ready, breath in, engage, gently curling, curling, curling. Up, relax through the shoulders, hold. Breath in, exhale slowly, slowly back down. And again. Breath in, engage, drawing up. It is hard work, we're lifting the head and shoulders and the head is one of the heaviest parts of the body. So it is gonna to be tough. Breath in, but it's a great free weight system so we can use it to build that strength. Okay, if you've had enough, relax there. If you want to bring it up into a double leg lift, really making sure that that lower back is in neutral. Couple here, breath in, engage, gently drawing up, up, up. So as the upper body is coming up, make sure those legs stay in place. Breath in, exhale, slow it down. Know that we're nearly there, we're only gonna do one more. Make sure that spine goes back into neutral, don't let it arch. Breath in, engage, drawing up, 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 hold. Last time, breath in, exhale, bring it down. Don't relax everything yet because we need that torso just to release those feet down to the floor, just to support them as one foot comes down first, then the other, then both knees into the chest and give them a good hug. Little rock side to side just to release the lower back. Good job, really good workout. So nice thing about adding the legs there is that we are adding and, and working with the upper body curling as well, is that we're working right the way through the torso, right from the lower abdominals through the mid and into the upper abdominals. I know, I can feel it, you say. <laughs> well done. From here, you can roll onto your other side or switch ends as we work through the side hip lift on the other side. Good job. So 
So from here, feet are in a nice straight line with the spine, knees are stacked, hips are stacked, elbow directly underneath shoulder. That one's really important there. And lifting that waist, engaging, lifting, opening up that shoulder frame, bringing that top hand up. Breath in, engage, extend and lengthen that top leg. When we're ready, breath in, engage, gently lift and lower. Now, if you can keep that leg working throughout without relaxing it back down on the other leg, then that's fantastic. If you need to, then build up the strength by releasing in between each of the moves. Take it at your pace. One more here. Now, if you want to, let's lift those hips. So engage and lift. So the weight is coming up onto the elbow, onto the knee. Extend that leg, let's go again, lift and nice and long. And again. And again, this time we're gonna hold it. Let's bring it up and hold it for five, four. If you need to release the head to the hand, you can. Two, one, lower the leg, bring it down, bring the hips down and curl up, but remember to move into that clam position rather, into, rather than into the full roll up. So make sure the spine is in a nice straight line, the head is relaxed back, the knees are bent forward, the feet are in a straight line with the spine here. Top hand is down in front of you, relaxed. Now breathe in and engage the core here, it still needs to do some work for you. Keep that hip anchored. Breath in, engage, drawing up through the top knee, up, 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 pulling. Then remember that squeeze, that ball, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Good job. Try not to touch the other knee and come straight back up again if you can to keep the flow going. Keep that work going, get a little bit more effort out of the exercise. But again, choose the level that you need to work at. Drawing up and releasing. Good job. Last one here, stretch, hold, squeeze, and we're done. Well done, draw those knees up, curl down, and relax here. Well done. Good job, just stay there, relax for a moment. Well done, you're doing really good work here. When you're ready, coming up to seated, and we're gonna take that core strength, and then we're gonna add it into that flexibility of the spine that we were working on with the one leg kicks at the beginning, and we're gonna combine the two together to work on our tucked rolls. So from here, we're sitting up nice and tall and we've got them feet, knees and feet at hip distance. Then we're gonna bring them together. So the knees and feet are touching this time and then we are literally gonna tuck them into the body. Now I can't emphasize enough that we can tuck ourselves into a little ball, but if we tuck ourselves so tight and we tense our shoulders with worry that we're actually going to about to do a roll, relax, okay? If you can keep the shoulders relaxed, you'll keep that curve in the spine and you'll get more flexibility in the spine, which will give you better momentum, which will help you out with this exercise. So try and be relaxed about it, okay? Now, be aware, some people will have flatter backs than others. For some people, you will really struggle with the roll. It's not anything you're doing wrong. It may just be that you have more of a flat back, okay? So just give it a go and see how you get on with it. Have some fun. So drawing the feet together into the body, using the hands to draw them in nice and small, bringing the chin down, the shoulders round and relax those shoulders, relax the neck. We're going to use them as a little springboard as we come back up. So walking the toes back until we're balanced, then we take a breath in 
As we exhale, we curl, we release back, and then we use the momentum to bring ourselves back up, hopefully. If you need to release the legs to help you out a little bit, it's fine as you build your strength through the exercise. And again, breath in, engage. Balance to start with if you can. Breath in, exhale, tucking in, round. Roll and coming back up. Good job. So while you're finding your way through this exercise, then bring those toes back down to the mat each time to reset. Ultimately, what you want to build is to be able to balance, hold, roll back, and come back into that balance, ready to go again. But make sure you've got it nice and stable before you go again. Breath in, engage, curl, roll. Back up, good job. One more here, breath in, engage, curl. Sitting up. Well done, bringing the feet down now, extending them forward and folding down and forward to release that work. Well done. Good job, well done. Good fun and good work for your strength and your flexibility. Well done. From here, we're going to come down onto the mat, onto our backs for our last exercise. So feet and knees back to hip distance, and we're gently going to roll down. So we're gently going to curl around, use the hands behind the legs to help you out, and then bring them down to the mat, both together, if you need some support as you come down. Good job. Well done. From here, we're just going to do a couple of leg circles. So lower back is in neutral, shoulders are relaxed. Breath in, engage, drawing up one and the other leg and tucking them together into the body. The feet are nice and low, we can't see them if we're looking and we're relaxing the hands down beside you on the mat. Now the feet are at the clock face and they're at number six. We take a breath in, engage the core. As we exhale, the feet are going to lead as they come out to the side, just a little way, and they come round the clock face. And at the top there at 12 o'clock there, let's bring them back round and back to six. In that mo movement, all the way around that clock, you shouldn't be able to see them, okay? Now we're coming back anti-clockwise. Breath in, engage using the legs moving together as one unit, drawing them back to the center to 12 o'clock, back round to six. And again, breath in, engage, gently circling. Back to the start. And last one going anti-clockwise, keeping those feet and knees wedged together, using the whole body to control the motion of the legs back to center and we're done. We're gonna move into a full body stretch, nice and long legs out long, fingertips reaching, breath in. Exhale and relax here if you can. Well done. On the next exhale, relax the arms down beside you and gently make your way onto your side as we move into the cool down stretches. Good job. From here, the upper body is nice and straight and there's just a little gentle bend in the knees there. What we're going to do then is we're going to bring the top heel up towards the bottom. Now, if you can reach round, lift it and grab your leggings or your ankle and then tuck it back underneath you towards your bottom, that will increase the stretch further. But again, just choose what works for you. Gently push your hips forward to increase the stretch and just gently stretch through the front of the leg there. Well done. When you're ready, release that leg and it's going straight into the next stretch. So this time we're going to hover just above the other foot and we're going to lead with the heel. We're pushing away with the heel and drawing up with the toes 
as we extend and stretch through the back of the leg this time. Hold it there, pushing away and releasing. Point the toe, bring the leg back down. Well done. Gently rolling onto your back now. Now we're going to work that work, release that work we did through the hip flexors and through those glutes with the feet at hip distance, shoulders relaxed, bringing one foot up over the other knee. So from here, take the knee that's raised and you can gently encourage it to open up to relax through that hip flexor there. Now that might be plenty enough stretch for you there, but if you want to extend it further, then reach through the supporting leg, taking the thigh on either side and gently drawing that leg up to right angles to draw the knee into the body and feel that lovely stretch extending round the glutes. Nice deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Good job. Release and bringing that foot down and switching sides, bringing the other foot over the knee. Opening up to start with, pushing through, just waking up through that hip flexor. Good job. And then when you're ready, if you want to take it further, then drawing that leg up and drawing in towards the body. Gently releasing and bringing the foot down before taking the other foot off. And then we're rolling straight onto our other side. We're going to stretch through the legs on the other side. So upper body nice and straight. Little bend just in the knee just to give you a little bit of support. Then gently drawing the foot up towards the bottom and just holding it there. If you can reach back and bring it closer using your leggings or your ankle, then you're welcome to do so. Pushing those hips forward. Releasing and stretching, pushing the heel away, drawing the toes back up. Stretching, stretching. Hold it there. And release, bending the toe and relaxing. Well done. Coming round onto your tummy when you're ready. From here, we're going to place the elbows directly underneath the shoulders, forearms nice and long, legs nice and long at hip distance. And we're just gently going to stretch out the lower back, placing the hands down onto the mat, just gently squeezing the shoulder blades together and down as we gently lift the head to look up and feel that lovely stretch through the back. Nice deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. If you want to extend it a little bit further, you can push through the palms and increase that stretch. And relax down and out of it. Taking the elbows out and gently bring the head down onto the mat. From here, I want you to find your comfortable, relaxed position. So you can pop a cushion under your head, you can bring your hands underneath your head, or you can leave your head down on the mat. I want you to open the legs a little bit wider than usual, turning the toes in and relaxing the heels out to release the leg muscles. Good job. From here, I want you to take a deep breath in through the nose, and out through the mouth. 
As you relax, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to feel that lovely connection between the body and the floor. I want you to feel the muscles relaxing and melting down into the floor. And finally, take any stress or tension or worry from the day and send it down also away from the body, into the floor and away from you as you just take a moment to totally relax. Gently turn your head to the other side. When you're ready, pushing through the palms and gently making your way back to child's pose. Nice deep breaths here, in through the nose and out through the mouth. Take your time rolling up, making sure that the feet come to hip distance and slowly pushing through the legs and taking your time to restack the spine one vertebrae at a time. Taking the shoulders back and down, lengthening the neck up and away. Arm circles to finish, deep breath in to come up, and out to circle. And again, in. And out. Last one, stretching, reaching up onto your toes, bringing the hands round to the prayer and giving yourselves a good clap. Well done, everybody. Good job. <laughs>